Welcome to After the Whistle, your weekly sports wrap-up show. Welcome in to After the Whistle. I'm Ryan Blank. This weekend marked one of the biggest, if not the biggest, event in Bismarck. The McQuaid softball tournament was back in town. In 1976, Sam McQuaid Sr. decided to host a softball tournament to help raise money for organizations in the Bismarck Mandan area. Now, it's grown into an even larger affair, bringing together players from all around the world. And all for some great causes. Military veterans, friend groups, and elite softball sluggers all came to North Dakota for the tournament with a total of over 400 teams lining up to participate. The proceeds from the event are used to help support local organizations in the Bismarck community, with the Special Olympics and Cancer Awareness Groups being some of the primary recipients of the tournament's funds. When these organizations tell us about how much the money that they get from our tournament impacts their ability to conduct the operations that they need to for their clients, their people, or whatever program um, they're you know, working with. And so once we get to the banquet and we hear that, then we all sit back and say, okay, that's why we do this. Yesterday's rain unfortunately prevented us from providing more game footage. Now, one man in Mandan has quite the love for one car company. That's why I like these old Dodges, you know. See how fast that started? Purrs like a kitten. A love for Dodge cars runs deep in the Gartner family, dating back to the 1950s. Back then it was just different, you know, they, like the Dodge slogan was Dodge different, you know, and everybody had a Chevy, everybody had a Camaro, everybody had a Mustang, you know, a Chevy pickup was a dime a dozen. I was the only one back then. For John Gartner Jr., after growing up around the Dodge brand, he started collecting vintage cars that has turned into a collection of over 50 vehicles. I'm the one that kind of took it to another level, but I guess my dad always had old Dodge pickups and stuff when I was growing up, and I just kind of liked them, and then I bought my first one at 14, and it just started growing from there, I guess, when I was the only one driving around with an old Dodge pickup like that, and then all of a sudden, hey, my uncle's got one over here, this guy's got one on his farm, and then I just started gobbling them up back in the 90s when they weren't really worth anything. I don't know if you see a pattern here, but that's a van, that's a pickup, and then I got two more vans, and that, that semi is based off of the van, you know, so I have one of every model there. So I got the, the, the semi, the camper, the pickup, the no window van, and then an all window van. Gartner still owns the pickup he bought when he was 14 and still drives it. He says it's his favorite car out of his entire collection. My dad and I were at a race down in South Dakota and the guy had it for, well, he didn't have it for sale, but he, he was pitting next to us and I'm like, oh, I gotta have that thing. And I still remember working every day to pay for it, you know, cause it was a lot of money back then. I paid $2,000 in 92. And to be honest, that's one of the most expensive ones I've ever bought. I still got it, still drive it. It's been through a lot with me and it never let me down. When it comes to collecting these vintage cars, he compares it to treasure hunting. It's like, what's around the next corner? You know, you always catch a whim of, oh, there might be one over here, or my buddy's seen one over here. And then you go, you, you know, go knocking on doors or asking around, or you get a photo of it. I got an idea what I want to do with all of them. I'll probably have to live till I'm a thousand to get them done, but you know, that's what keeps me going every day and gets me up and go to work, and that's what I live for. With a treasure hunting mentality, he focuses on the original and rare vehicles to add to his collection. The oddballs, you know, like this old pickup here, you know, you'll never see another one like that. Or this old cab over over here, or this camper that's beautiful, you know, it's just when you find it like that, they're just unmolested. Nice, running, driving, it's like, there's no, nothing better than that. That's what I like, I like this unique stuff that just, people just, their eyes pop out of their head when they see you driving around with it, you know, and like that old country song says, you'll know it's me when I drive through your town, you know. With his large amount of vehicles, Gartner never thought that he would have the collection he has today. I never imagined that because it's been a lot of work and it's still fun. I don't really like to spend a bunch of money on stuff, so when you find them at a reasonable price, you, you gobble them up and you go going on the adventure. And like every vehicle here, I, can, I remember how I paid for them and what I had to do to buy them. Not only does he collect cars, but Gartner also races. My dad, he was racing when I was little, my whole life. His dad raced, you know. 
So, and his dad was kind of the same way. Everybody was racing Fords back then and they started racing the Chevy. Like I said, my dad raced. So then when he got out of racing, right when I was out of high school, I started racing in 96 and I've been racing ever since. One of the most special things about Gartner's Dodge collection is being able to share it with his daughter. She comes down here and helps me already and she loves anything with a motor she'll ride on, you know. If I start up that snowblower or my forklift or my lawnmower, she's right on there. There's a lot of times she comes down here and all we do is ride around on a motorcycle and four-wheeler and, but she, she tells me she wants to race already, so she's pretty convinced that she's gonna do it. Getting to share that with her and, you know, making memories like that, that I'm just tickled pink that I get to do that. Gartner has no plans to ever stop adding to his collection and doing what he loves. Reporting for KX Sports, I'm Ryan Blank. Welcome back into After the Whistle. Tristan Thomas here with Chatting with the Champs, and we're now in Watford City chatting with the uh, state champion in the mile, uh, Jalen Ogle. And Jalen, just tell me about, you know, what was it like to go out to Bismarck this year and uh, take home that state title? Uh, it, was a, it was a good feeling. Like, I, I feel really accomplished because I've worked almost, like, what, six years up to it, I guess. And um, just crossing that line, knowing that, like, all of, my hard work and dedication just paid off like right then and there, so. Yeah, and what was it like this year? I know you were telling me before we went on that uh, last year was a bit of a struggle, um, mm -hmm. but you were able to obviously come back this year and, and finish strong. What was uh, maybe the difference between last year and this year? Last year, I just learned a lot, and I learned what my body needed and what it didn't need, I guess is how to explain it, but um, the difference has like changed me, who I am as a person, and I just, I learned and experienced a lot from last year and I used it to this year and obviously it paid off a lot, so yeah. Yeah, and how would you look back just kind of on your uh, running career here uh, at Wofford City and uh, what was it like just kind of like, you know, being able to represent Wofford City where a lot of times it's the Bismarck schools, the Minot schools at the very top, but you know, you're able to take, take home a state title for a school like Wofford City. I mean, what does that mean to you? Um, <laughs> It's a, I don't know, people here are like really supportive in Watford City and getting the name out there for us just a little bit more was really exciting and I just, I loved being able to make people from here proud and um, just kind of putting our name out there a little more and um, I don't know, I just, I love having that feeling of like knowing that people are proud of me and that like, um, I don't know, that and it shows like little kids like younger kids too like we have what it takes to be up there you just have to work extra hard to get there yeah and so what will you remember kind of most about your your running career here whether it's cross country track I mean, what will some of the uh your favorite memories be uh, as you look back um it's definitely whenever i cross that finish line it's always going up to my parents and giving them a hug because no matter how i did they were always right there um supporting me in any way possible and I knew that they would be there 
every single race they were always there at the end and um that's one really like just something that will always stay like stick with me and um my teammates and coaches and stuff like they're always there supporting me and we're always out doing something crazy together like whether it's like going on runs and just talking or um just going on like cute little like brunches like after our runs and stuff like those memories will always stay with me yeah and so you as you mentioned family but uh, looking ahead to your your uh, college career you're going to go to mississippi state and join your sister haley on the, the uh, team there uh, i mean what are you looking forward to about about that um it's going to be exciting to be able to run with her again um the past two years it's been kind of lonely like not having them both my sisters and so getting to run with her is going to be really exciting and me and her are very very competitive people so we'll definitely have each other to push each other and keep each other kind of in line and stuff so really excited about that who's the faster runner <sighs> depends on the race she's definitely got me beating that 800 but I don't know. The longer distances, I kind of got her beat, I think. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll have to, to wait and see who, yep. who puts in the best times. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you. I appreciate the time and uh, good luck in Starkville in college. Thank you. Awesome. And I'll be back with more after the whistle next. Welcome back in After the Whistle, I'm Tristan Thomas. Our Chatting with the Champs series now takes a stop at Williston, where the Coyotes had state winners in both track and field events to wrap up the spring season at the Bismarck Bowl. A dramatic finish in the 800 meter run gave Williston's Ethan Moe not just a state title, but a state record of 1 minute 51.98 seconds and a third straight title in the event on day two at state track. The last 50 meters I felt myself kind of uh, locking up a little bit, getting tired, and I looked up on the scoreboard and I saw a uh, rail coming from behind me and I just heard the atmosphere of the crowd change. They're like, oh, like gasping, and I was like, I just, you know, whatever it takes to win, got to dive for it. So, yeah, it was just kind of a moment, a spur of the moment thing. Me and me and one of my assistant coaches were on the a hill on like the back stretch and kind of saw him hit a wall. And that other kid, he's he's a phenomenal athlete too. Um, saw him catch each other in the dive, and we all started celebrating really hard. And then I was like, wait, we we did win that, right? And then you know, we got the took him a while to announce it. it. Took like five or ten minutes for them to announce that he did it. What a way to get a win and photo finish, and it, it was awesome. Finishing atop the event once is a big achievement, but defending that crown twice makes taking gold extra special. One time defending is different, but two time is, yeah, you just got to finish and cap it off because you don't want to come home and have everyone be disappointed. But yeah, it feels good to have all the 
pressure lifted off of uh, your backs. I mean, I was I was feeling it a little bit, but I didn't let it bother me and just go out there and do what I always do. We are uh, extremely lucky to have a kid like that. It's uh, funny to think about expecting a kid to win two state titles going in. It's tough to expect that of a high school kid, but a kid like that, you know, once you get there, he's put in all the work to get it done, and it was phenomenal seeing him get it done, especially in the 800 going three times in a row. That's not easy to do. While the 800 meter has been the trademark throughout his career, an elusive crown has been the one mile, an event he found redemption in after finishing second place last year, breaking Sean Korsno's state record with a time of 4 minutes, 10.08 seconds. It was definitely a lifetime experience, I'd say. I mean, as a senior, you always just want to put a, a good finish on your career and you want people to remember you and look up to you. And yeah, I think that's what I was, my motivating factor is just kind of doing it for like all the younger kids on my team that look up to me. Mo will now take his talents in cross country and track and field to NDSU. I'm excited. I just kind of want to get in there and start figuring things out. Um, we'll see if I'll have to redshirt or not, but I have um, some big goals, some big team goals. Joining him on the Bison track and field team is fellow Williston grad J.D. Williams. Yeah, I'm just making sure I stay, stay active, stay moving, making sure I work out right, run right, make sure I still get my lifts in and stuff like that just so it can prepare me for the next season and see how that takes me forward from there. Setting a school record in the long jump earlier in the season, Williams then set a PR to claim the Class A title in the event. I felt really good the first day I got there. I was telling people I got to scope out my long jump pit. That's what I was calling it, my long jump pit that day. I was scoping it out, looking at stuff, putting my mark down and stuff like that. So when the day came, I was making sure I warmed up extra good. I just got done watching my friend Dexter long jump, first time going to state. So that was a really good feeling, and I wanted to just do it for him and do it for everybody who supported me this whole way. Oh, man, I'm so proud of him. He went from... Just joining track because his brother did it as a sophomore, took fourth at state in long jump, and then he just had a tough year last year, didn't place, and then to just come back and learn from those lessons to come back and win it, man, and get 10 points for our team, man, I'm so proud of him. He, he deserves it all. And the mark that ultimately claimed the state crown just so happened to be his very first recorded jump. It was like, it was surprised because like the jump didn't feel that good. Like it felt really, it felt good to like a certain extent, but when it was 23, that's like what, what really blew my mind. I've always wanted to jump 23, get past that 22 mark. I've always been right there, and the school record was 22.10, so I wanted to break it with a 23, and it ended up being that first jump. It didn't feel like it, but hey, it felt really good. We had talked at length with him, um, just coaching him. Just you know, we need to get on the board right away. Um, we've had not that he had issues with it, but just you know, some inconsistencies, and then. Um, come his very first jump, which is the one that won it for him. It was his very first jump at the state meet. Um, he got on the board just to build confidence, and I mean, that was, that was an amazing jump right away. And then after that, he was riding high, so everything after that was just awesome, and what a great kid to have that happen to. Winning his first career state championship was the perfect way to wrap up his third and final prep season in the sport. I always wanted to get my picture on the wall over there next to like Ethan and Laney's from past previous winners and and at the arc when you put your name on the wall. I just, it just felt really good. I wanted to make sure it was my last year and I just ended it right. Now Mo and Williams aren't the only Williston athletes headed to Fargo for college. Ivan Askim is also signed on to run cross country for the Bison. Stay with us. We got more after the whistle coming up after the break.
Well, this weekend was the annual McQuaid softball tournament on Friday morning. A tournament first occurred to open the weekend at the State Penitentiary as residents and one of the tournament teams faced off in an exhibition game. We're always looking for different things to do with the McQuaid tournament and we were actually um, approached by Travis Collins out here at the State Penitentiary to see if this could even be a possibility to see if they could become uh, involved in the McQuaid tournament in some small way. When it came to choosing a team that would play at the penitentiary, it was an easy decision. The USA Patriots would be the ones to play. They're a team made up of all military uh, veterans who lost a limb while serving for our country. So they're a great inspiration uh, for anyone that watches them play. And I think the residents out here, it was even more exciting for them to know that they would be playing a team of military veterans. Despite the game being a small act, the residents were excited to have the opportunity to share the diamond with the veterans. We knew that this was something we had to do. You know, these guys are our heroes. And um, what better way to, you know, establish something here by, you know, bringing the two communities together. When you see these men who go out and they sacrifice themselves for our country, I mean, the little the li little bit of what we could do was just show up to give them this. and. Um, you know, you just have so much respect and being an American, you know, you got to stand by these men at all times. In the game, the Patriots came out victorious, but that's not what matters. What matters most is having this special experience together. It's the cool thing about this team and what we do, we, we do a lot of different things. It was pretty neat. I mean, especially with the rain going on, it was, there's a lot of camaraderie going on. So it was just, it was, a, it was a fun experience. Absolutely amazing. You know, just to be able to do that and come together. And again, just to see the athletic guys out there and to play with them. You know, um, of course we wanted to win, definitely that. But I mean, just the experience within itself is a lifetime. It was amazing. I know the residents out here were just so excited to have this. The players were way beyond excited. And after the game, when we talked to them, they said it was the best experience they've had playing softball. After the successful start to the 48th McQuaid's tournament on Friday morning at the penitentiary, everyone said they want this game to happen again and hope that it continues for years to come. After yesterday's postponement of all games, the tournament was able to play today and they were able to crown champions in all 14 divisions. Let's take a look at those champions. In the women's C and D division, it's the Bozeman Renegades. In the women's rec one, it's the Riley Repair. Then Women's Rec 2, Bismarck send it with the Rec 3 division, Bismarck Trans Trash, followed by the last Women's Rec 4 division, Try Harder. Now let's go over to the men's side, Men's C. It's the St. Cloud Subaru, followed by the Minnesota, Minnesota Silverbacks in the Men's D division. Going on to the Men's Masters Plus 35 division, Fargo team without a title takes the title. And then the Men's Masters 50 to 60 age division, Mandan Bowers excavating team wins that one. Now continuing in the men's, the last five, men's rec one, South Dakota DFC. Then in rec two, it's OK Tire and Blushed, followed by the men's rec three, Budweiser. It's the Bismarck Pounders, followed by the Olberg Construction Company of Bismarck winning that rec three Bud Light title. And then men's rec four is Vortex out of Wapaton. We'll have more on After the Whistle next.
Welcome back to After the Whistle. Another busy week with a full slate of sports here in North Dakota. So let's take a look at our two top plays of the week. We'll start earlier in the week from the Larks and Moondog series at number two. And it's a single into left field. And that'll bring home a run for the Moondogs. Well, that's all they'll get as Jake Simons throws out the runner at the plate with a great throw. But also Sam Beezer, great spin and tag at the dish for the out. Now let's go to our top play of the week. Comes from the McQuaid's tournament. It's that game between the Bismarck Moose and Bowers Excavation. Third baseman for the Moose ranging over foul territory. Full extension dives and makes the play in front of the fence. Defense highlighting this week's top plays. That'll do it for this week's edition of After the Whistle. Make sure to tune in next time. Thanks for watching After the Whistle, your weekly sports wrap up show.